Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to analyze the stock of Kimberly Clark. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of investing videos on this channel. So if you like that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this one. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, Kimberly Clark's business is very easy to understand. Here is what they sell. I just did a quick internet search for Kimberly Clark products. I wonder if they're going to be able to sell even more given the focus most of us have now on maintaining good hygiene. We may want more soap, more paper towels, etc. Here is the stock of Kimberly Clark. It's down about 1.5% over the past year, so it's really just going nowhere. If we zoom out, we look at it 10 years, it's up about 100%, which does not include dividends. They pay a pretty nice dividend here, yielding about 3.4%. They're currently trading at about 18 times next period's earnings, and they're valued at about $45 billion. So here I'm looking at Kimberly Clark's income statements for the past seven or eight years or so. Total revenues have really gone nowhere, guys. We're looking at about $19.7 billion in 2014. Where are we at now? Well, trailing 12 months, it's about $18.8 billion. Now, you do notice net income has gone up. So they have improved their bottom line, which is most important. But it's certainly not any kind of dramatic increase here. You know, they're making about $1.5 billion, most recently $2.2 billion. Earnings per share appears to be going up at a bit more of a dramatic pace there. So it's likely they're doing share buybacks. So I'm not in love with the balance sheet. They have pretty high leverage ratios with liabilities to assets close to 100%. Debt to assets, 44%. These are pretty high. By the way, if you don't know any of the ratios, check them out in the description below. Liquidity is a bit of a concern here. Current ratio, less than one. That means they have more current liabilities than they have current assets. Where are they going to make up the difference? Well, they'll figure out a way, but I really don't like it. The interest coverage ratio is 13, so that is definitely manageable. I was thinking it would be more given all their debt, so that's good to see. Given the nature of their business, it's not surprising that 70% of their assets are long-term assets as they require manufacturing facilities. So overall, I really don't like the balance sheet that much. It's not horrible. I would give it a C-. minus. So here are dividends and buybacks in millions for Kimberly Clark over the past five years or so. Notice in red the buybacks. As I suspected, they engage in pretty substantial buyback activity. You're looking at 600, maybe, you know, eight, nine hundred billion dollars in buybacks. In 2019, they did about 1.8 billion in buybacks. So. That's a lot, guys, considering their market cap is about $45 billion. In blue, you notice that they are increasing that dividend every year. And, you know, not by much. It looks pretty close, but they are increasing it. And you'll love to see that. Now, can they afford to keep increasing it? Let's look at the payout ratios here. In blue, we got the regular payout ratio. Basically, what's your dividend divided by what's your total profit? And, you know, for them, it looks like they pay a little more than half of their profits out as a dividend every year. That's a little high. They have some room to grow it, but not a whole lot, especially given their debt burden. When you look at the modified payout ratio, that's basically your dividends plus your buybacks all divided by your profit for the year. So, yeah, they're not leaving a whole a lot of money for reinvestments. In 2020, they paid out 84.7% of 
as either dividends or buybacks. Here's where analysts expect their earnings to be going going forward. You know, we're not looking at tremendous growth. We're actually looking at they're going to come down a little bit from last year's, you know, uh, you know, big sales, probably sold a lot of toilet paper during the pandemic. After that, pretty modest growth, 7%, 4%, 5 you know. And there's not a whole lot of disagreement. If we look here at the lowest and the highest estimate for 2022, you got 14 different analysts. You know, it's not that far apart, actually. 764 compared to 820. So unless all the analysts are very wrong here, you pretty much know what you're going to get with Kimberly Clark. All right, guys, so now we're going to use an intrinsic valuation model to come up with a fair value for Kimberly Clark stock. I'll forecast out the next five years based on analyst growth forecast, and we're going to plug in those free cash flows into our model. After five years, I'll assume they can increase prices at about 2% per year thereafter. And then I'm going to show you guys what the stock would be worth Given those growth rates, I'm going to show you guys under different assumptions about their growth and also with different discount rates so you can make up your mind for yourself. Let's have a look. All right, guys, so here's what we got. We got a valuation matrix. Every cell represents the fair value of Kimberly Clark stock. Given a certain discount rate, a required rate of return, and given a certain growth rate, in the free cash flows over the next five years after five years we're assuming two percent per year so yeah the stock's trading about 134 dollars as of the time i make the video it's just not going to be a good deal as you can see for example if they're going to grow at five percent per year and you want an eight percent return that puts you in this cell right here you shouldn't pay more than about $94 for the stock. To get a better sense of whether it's a good deal, let's uh, visualize it a bit. And you can see here in the matrix below, I color coded. It's red if it's overvalued and green if it's undervalued. So it's only undervalued if you want, for example, a 6% return and you figure they're going to be able to grow cash flows at about five or seven and a half percent otherwise it's overvalued all right guys here are my final thoughts on kimberly clark you know it's just not that attractive of a company you look at the balance sheet they're not really in great shape the dividend payout ratio is already a little bit high so they're not they don't have as much room to raise that dividend you know, in the actual business, when you look at the past 10 years or so, and you look at analysts are forecasting going forward, there's really not a whole lot of growth going on. Yeah, they make money every year. They're a stable business. But to be trading at 18 times earnings, it's just too much. You know, you can still buy Kroger at a pretty good price right now. You can buy a lot of cigarette companies out there. There is no reason to own Kimberly Clark, in my opinion. You know, I really view it as kind of a dividend trap. Their dividend yield is close to 3.4%. They have a history of raising it. You know, a lot of people look at that and they, they want to add it to their portfolio. But, you know, don't focus too much on dividends. That's something to consider, you know, if you're a retiree. But even then, guys, you know, you got to look at the whole picture of the company. That's just one part. So anyhow, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.